Let's learn how to knit the woolly waffle shawl. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cast on at the top center of the shawl with an I-cord tab cast on. I'll teach you how to work the I-cord edges. We're going to knit and purl, and I'm going to show you how to work the make one increases to shape the semicircle. This is the woolly waffle shawl that starts at the top center using four colors of DK weight yarn. And I'm gonna show you how to knit and cast on the shawl. So anytime below this video, you can click on the timestamps linked below and skip ahead to row two or skip ahead to the broken rib section. If there's a part that's easy for you, you can skip ahead in the video to get to the good stuff. But you're gonna need four skeins of DK weight yarn and fade them from light to dark. So that's gonna look something like this. You've got color A as your lightest color and then color B, a little bit darker or more saturated, color C, and then finally color D will be the border. So with my color selection, I started really light, and then I found that color, that pinky color that was in color A. There was a similar tone in color B, and that's what's gonna help melt and connect the colors together. So if you really want that seamless blend of color, you wanna find some commonalities, some similar tones in the neighboring colorways. So that pink connected to the other pink and then it brought in a little bit more gold. So I exaggerated that gold with this skein that had gold and brought in more gray. And then this one was much more neutral. So that was a really good segue into my final border color. So what's going to help you get that perfect melted blend is using speckled yarns, variegated multicolor yarns, yarns that have that shadowy depth to them with something light and something dark in them, those really help blend because how you do the fading technique is just by working with one color on its own and then you're gonna work some stripes later with color A and color B. So you'll work color A and then two rows of color A, two rows of B, two rows of A, two rows of B. And then those colors stripe together right here to make a blended section from color A into color B. Then you work with color B on its own for a little while, and I tell you exactly where to stripe colors for colors B and C together. And then color C on its own, and then you finish the shawl with color D. So having those speckled yarns are really gonna help you with that blend, getting DK weight yarn from your stash, or you can check out at Stephen and Penelope if we've got some kits for you with DK weight. It's really fun, and the best way, I think, to get that nice transition is not just thinking about color, but also thinking about lightness and darkness. So even if you can't find those perfectly matching colors from skein to skein, you can get a good melt with starting light and then going dark. So even if your first color is yellow and your second color is green, as long as your first color is lighter, yellow and the second color is a darker green, you can get that light to dark color fade as well. But the little color connections help making sure you get that seamless, perfect fade. So let's dive into the Wooly Waffle Shawl, starting at the top center with the I-cord tab cast on and making this beautiful DK weight shawl. This is the top center of the Wooly Waffle Shawl. I'm gonna show you how to cast on, work those increases, and get you started and well on your way with your first color. Use color A, or the lightest color, for the beginning of the shawl. And you're going to need a circular needle with a long cord for that border at the end. <clears throat> using A, cast on three stitches, using any cast on method that you like. I'm gonna do a long tail cast on, this is my first stitch, and then cast on your second stitch, and stitch number three. You should have a little tail of yarn left over. So make sure you're working with the working yarn connected to your ball. Knit three stitches. You can turn around to knit, but I don't. I just look at the same side after casting on, and I slip the three stitches onto my left needle before knitting the three. But if you want to just turn around like regular and knit the three, that's okay. Knit three stitches. Slip three stitches onto left needle, like this. Repeat from the asterisk twice more. So this is once, knitting the three, slipping them onto the left needle. And the second time, 
knit three. And slip them onto the left needle. So that was twice more. Now we're going to knit three. Knit three. Pick up and knit three stitches along the I-cord edge. <clears throat> we're going to do that right here. One, two, three. So pick up into both legs of that I-cord stitch. And then go into the second stitch. Both legs of the I-cord stitch for number two and number three. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, <clears throat> You can insert the needle tip the same way, wrap the yarn around and pull it through. One, two, three. Picked up stitches along the I-cord edge. You should have six stitches on your right needle. Turn to work wrong side. Next row, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches along I-cord edge, starting at the stitch closest to the left needle tip. <clears throat> so I'm going to start right here with the stitch closest to my left needle tip. I'm gonna pick it up and knit it. And then knit a second stitch. You can get any three strands of yarn along this cast on edge. And here's a third strand of yarn. That works. This little strand also works. Just pick up and knit any three strands of yarn at the cast on edge. And if anything looks weird, you can use this tail of yarn at the end of your project to do some surgery and sew anything closed. So that was the pick up and knit three, purl three, one, two, three, and slip three with yarn in front. One, two, three. Stockinette stitch, row one. So on the right side, at the beginning of your project, you might want to place a split ring marker on the right, right side to mark that as the right side to make sure you don't get confused. But row one, right side, knit three, one, two, three, make one using a backwards loop cast on. Make one like that. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, the make one, you're going to twist the yarn and pop it onto the needle. And you want to see that crisscross. It's not a yarn over, it's a make one increase. So twist the yarn, just give it a little half twist, and put it onto the right needle tip. Just like that. Make one. That's an increase. Knit one, make one three times. Knit one, make one once twice, and three times. Again, for you English style knitters, when you knit one, make one, give it that half twist and put it onto the needle like that. If you would like another increase, you can feel free to use any other increase that you like, but I recommend the make one with a backwards loop. At the end of row one, slip three with yarn in front. One, two, three with the yarn in front. Row two, wrong side. We're gonna be making these I-cord edges on the edges of our shawl like that. And the magic of the I-cord is when you turn to work the other side, the yarn is already in back to knit. So row two, wrong side, knit three. One, two, three. Purl to last three stitches. Purl all of the stitches until you reach the final three. Three stitches remain. Slip three with yarn in front. You could slip them all at the same time like this. With the yarn in front. Row three, right side. Knit three. Make one. Knit one, make one seven times. One, two, three, oops, 
4. Five, six, and seven. You should be at the last three stitches. Slip three with yarn in front. One, two, three with the yarn in front. You should have 21 stitches. If those make ones look a little bit loose to you, there might be a little space coming through that make one stitch. It's okay. I have a tiny little space in my shawl, but that's okay. It's a nice and drapey shawl, so it doesn't have to be super, super tight. But again, if you like any other increase, feel free to use a different type of increase, but that make one is so quick and easy, and it looks really beautiful in the finished shawl. Row four, Knit three, purl to last three stitches. These next rows are really, really easy, so I'm gonna skip ahead. So keep on working rows four, five, six, seven, and eight, and make sure you're working the knit stitches on the right side to get that smooth stockinette stitch, and you'll, you will be purling on the wrong side to get those purl bumps. You always knit the first three stitches, and you always slip the last three stitches with yarn in front on both sides. So keep on working row four, purling to last three stitches, and work until row eight, and I'll see you for the one by one broken rib section. Keep on going. I just finished row eight, one by one broken rib, row one right side. Let's do some more increases. Knit three, make one, Knit one, make one to last three stitches. Knit one, make one. Knit one, make one. Increase one stitch after every knit stitch, all the way to the last three stitches. I'm going to zoom ahead and show you my speedy knitting skills, getting to the end of row one for this broken rib section. These increases worked every stitch are going to make that smooth semicircular shape. And if this is your first shawl that you're knitting, I use this increase method in all of my semicircle shawls, where you increase a lot in one row and then you get to relax later in the project without as much increases. So knit one, make one, all the way to the last three stitches. I just did my final make one stitch. Slip three with yarn in front. Row two, wrong side. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Purl one, knit one to last three stitches. Purl one, knit one. Purl one, knit one. So we're making some bumpy stitches now for a broken rib texture. If you pause your knitting and forget which stitch you knit, remember that those knit stitches are a little more smooth. And when you purl a stitch, you get that, do you see that little bump? That's a purl stitch, which means I need to knit one. Purl, knit, purl. For you English style knitters, knit one, purl, knit, yarn forward to purl, take it back to knit. Keep on going to the last three stitches. Once you reach the last three stitches on row two, you should end with a knit one, and then slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. You should have 45 stitches on your needle. If at any time you find yourself missing a stitch or have one stitch too many, you could sneak in an increase or a decrease at the edge of your shawl. One by one pattern repeat. Row three, right side. Knit three, make one, knit, to last three stitches. These are really easy rows. 
I'm going to skip ahead. At the end of row three, work a make one increase and slip three with yarn in front. Row four, wrong side, knit three, purl to last three stitches. At the end of row four, purling to last three stitches, slip three with yarn in front. Row five, knit three, make one, knit one, purl one, knit one to last three stitches. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. Take a look at your fabric and do you see that little purl bump from below? That little purl bump from row two? We're going to purl into that same column. So the purl bumps should be stacked and the knit stitch should be a smooth knit column right here. Knit, purl, knit, purl, knit. So make sure those purl bumps are stacked on top of the previous purl bump in that same column and then you'll get these smooth knit column stitches. Keep on going to the end of row five. Knit, purl, knit, purl, and knit. At the end of row five, you should end with a knit one and then make one before the last three stitches. So the knit one was the final stitch. Make one before the last three. Slip three with yarn in front. Row four, wrong side. Knit four, one, two, three, four. If that stitch is a little tight, sometimes that make one stitch is a little tight, you could loosen it up first so that you can easily knit into it. I just knit four, purl one, knit one, to last three stitches. At the end of row six, you should end with a knit one before the final three stitches. Slip the last three with yarn in front. Repeat rows three through six of one by one pattern repeat three more times. You should have 61 stitches after repeating rows three through six. So you're gonna get this smooth knit column forming in the fabric with those little broken rib bumps. And these columns are going to form the columns throughout the entire shawl. So we are right here in the shawl at the top center. And those columns, do you see how they continue? You always want to knit those columns on the right side and make sure that they don't get broken, that you don't get any purl stitches happening on the right side of those smooth columns. The purl bumps on the right side happen in between the columns. So those are all the techniques you need to know for the beginning of the shawl. As you continue working the pattern, you're going to get increases that expand the fabric in between those columns. And those purl bumps on the right side, they're going to get wider and wider. There was an increase that happened right here. It's okay if there's a little space. Do you see that little space for my increase? That's okay because it's a drapey shawl, but those sections are going to expand. This is the waffle stitch, the woolly waffle stitch, and it gets wider and wider as it expands into the border. And I just love how those columns continue into the chevron border. So keep on going with those techniques. Be really careful following the pattern and checking your stitch counts every now and then. The most important thing is to make sure that those knit columns that you establish maintain their smooth knitness. Always knit stitches on the right side and you'll be purling those columns on the wrong side. This is what the wrong side looks like. Also very beautiful. So keep on following the pattern closely. I tell you exactly where to change colors. So you're working with color A and then you'll be striping colors A and B together and then working color B on its own here in the middle of the shawl. 
and then colors B and C will stripe together around here, and then color C is worked on its own out here, and then you have color D for the border. That's for that chevron border. So follow the color recommendation closely. If you run out of a color early, depending on your yarn intention, maybe you're, you have smaller amounts of yarn, or maybe you run out of color earlier in the pattern, then just switch ahead to the next color and that's okay. So if you don't have enough yarn to complete the recommended color striping, just stop the old color, continue with the next color until the pattern says to stripe it with color C. So feel free to adjust the color sequence a little bit to suit your yarn requirements. And the border is another fun opportunity to customize. If you wanna bind off that border early, you could have a smaller little chevron border if you're running out of yarn. Or if you have more yarn or even a fifth color, you could make this border twice as long or even three times as long and have a really big, beautiful chevron border to have a dramatic, super large schlanket size. So that's all there is to it. And keep on following that pattern closely as you work those increases and knits and purls. Well, I hope that tutorial helped you get started on your shawl. It's really easy once you get the columns and the rows all set up. You just follow those knit stitches and let all the colors do the talking. So find some colors that you really love. And if you wanna spice it up and add an even darker color at the border and make that border bigger, I think that would be amazing. So get creative with your stash or check out all of our DK weight yarn options at stephenandpenelope.com. We often have these DK kits or some other DK weight yarns for you to make your own palette as well. So once you cast on the Wooly Waffle Shawl, please share your progress with the hashtag Wooly Waffle Shawl on Instagram, post them on Ravelry, and I can't wait to see how you transform this pattern with your own colors. Really, really easy. And once you knit it, you're gonna be addicted to those fading types of color transitions. So if you liked this tutorial and wanna check out some other West Knits tips and techniques, you can check out my workshops. I have a whole series of workshops at westknits.com. Some are on brioche knitting, there's a shawl design workshop, and I have a couple really fun color play, the West Knits way workshops that show you how I mix my colors together, how do you start with some random colors and make those beautiful shawls and sweaters? So I show you all those color tips and tricks at westknits.com and you can watch any of those workshops as many times as you like. So you can pause and watch them chapter by chapter. So check those out at westknits.com and uh, I have a lot of other tutorials here on YouTube as well. So thanks for sticking around and watching and I'm gonna cook up some other fun shawls and surprises for you later this year. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.